Louisiana's economy improved along with the American economy during the last years of peace. When the war began, Baton Rouge was already a major oil refining center owing to the Standard Oil Company of Louisiana Refinery. During the 1940s, this refinery and other major industries in Baton Rouge caused the city to become a vital cog in the nation's war machine. My father was Louis Price, and uh, he, was a, uh, he was an employee with Exxon, with Standard Oil in Baton Rouge, the Exxon refinery. He actually started working for him when he was 14 years old. He lied about his age, got a job at Exxon as, a, as a, uh, an office boy. And by night, going to night school and working in the refinery, he went through various steps in the refinery. And in 1936, he graduated from LSU with a, an engineering degree. Now, now back, back then, uh, uh, Standard Oil didn't really like to have LSU degreed engineers at, at the Baton Rouge refinery. They'd get people from MIT and Georgia Tech and so forth. So, but they knew, they knew my dad, so they hired him, and, and after that they began to hire LSU engineers. He worked on cr the creation of synthetic rubber, and he was also involved in the uh, use of catalytic converters to, uh, to process higher octane gasoline. The Standard Oil Complex, by the end of the war, included the first catalytic cracking plant ever built, which contributed heavily to the production of badly needed 100 octane aviation fuel and also created byproducts useful in making synthetic rubber. In addition, the complex housed an alkylation plant that made high-octane blending agents for aviation fuel, plants synthesizing both ethyl and isopropyl alcohol, and plants that produce synthetic rubber. By June 1945, the government estimated that the refinery fueled one plane of every 15 used in the war effort. The Aluminum Company of America also operated a plant in Baton Rouge that reduced bauxite ore to aluminum used in aircraft and other construction. By April 1944, the facility produced enough aluminum for 2,000 fighter planes per month. Shreveport was the center of wartime prosperity in northwest Louisiana. The J.B. Beard Company employed approximately 800 people and produced shell casings, tanks for the production of synthetic rubber and storage of high-octane fuel, landing barge anchors, and armored tank parts. The Brewster Company received raw steel tubing, which it finished into 250-pound bomb bodies and shipped to shell loading plants. The Shreveport Chamber of Commerce began lobbying the Army Ordnance Department in 1940 for a munitions plant, an effort that resulted in the announcement in April 1941 that the Army intended to locate a plant at nearby Minden. Despite problems encountered in construction, by 1943 the massive plant included 430 buildings scattered over 16,025 acres. New Orleans continued to be the state's busiest industrial area during the war years, producing a myriad of goods ranging from Liberty ships to tents. Ships were manufactured by Louisiana Shipyards, Delta Shipbuilding Company, and Higgins Industries. The B-cell shipyards built tugboats. You know, a lot of people don't think of a tugboat, you know, as having anything to do with the war effort, but they were vital. They helped to guide many of the larger ships into the ports right off the beaches at D-Day. Consolidation.